Today, we find ourselves in Northeast Washington at the Gift of Peace Hospice for people with terminal illnesses. The Missionaries of Charity established this home in 1986 for people who were suffering from AIDS and whose families had rejected them. Since that time, the sisters have continued to care for the terminally ill and those without housing. Not surprisingly, the sisters faced much opposition when they first opened this hospice. AIDS was the new contagion that had arisen among a group still despised by the majority of people. As usual, fear was the driver. Fear of disease, fear of infection, fear of death, fear of the new lepers, fear of the new untouchables. In our first reading, the prophet Jeremiah gives words to all these fears. And with a little editing, we can hear these words in our own day, and we can hear what Jesus heard said about him. Let us beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. Let us beset the just ones because they are obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doing, and he reproaches us with violations of the law. They set themselves against our fears and their generosity reproaches us with our violations against the law of love. Mother Teresa herself came in for such criticism as well. Her caring for the despised and abandoned must have pricked people's conscience, and they reacted as we might imagine. False and misleading assertions of poor medical care deathbed baptisms and forced conversion, links to colonialism and racism came from a variety of sources. And yet it is clear that the sisters cared for those who would receive care from no other source. I knew a community of the missionaries of charity when I lived in Yemen. They managed a house for Yemeni men and women who were mentally and physically impaired, whom their families had abandoned out of shame. Six sisters and a few volunteers cared for a hundred people. Their work helped to fulfill the promise of today's song. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and to those who are crushed in spirit. Those who are crushed in spirit, he will save. The sisters labored tire tirelessly, always with a cheerful word, always ready to host the Catholic community in their homes for weekly mass. I have always been struck that Mother Teresa's funeral came within days of that of Princess Diana, as though the Lord wanted to remind us that though a superstar can do good, anonymous others acting in faith can do so much more, when doing good is its own reward. A wise person said, everyone admires Mother Teresa. No one wants to live like her. The sisters lived as Jesus lived and through his inspiration. Jeremiah's prophecy was fulfilled in Jesus's case. Let us see whether his words be true. For if the just one be the son of God, he will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put him to the test that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death. No wonder that on the cross, among his last words were, I thirst. At the end of each day, the sisters may well say the same. We should not be surprised that in the chapel of each of their houses appears the inscription, I thirst. As we approach Holy Week, 
we will have a chance to follow Jesus through his passion to his death. Perhaps the example of the sisters can inspire us to realize that his spirit does indeed live on in them. And through them, they touch the poor whom Jesus loved. Through the power of the spirit, they respond to those who thirst. We live with resources that the sisters do not have, but they may well exceed us in zeal, in faith, and in service. Let's let their example inspire us to do what we can in our own small way to care for those whom Jesus loved, especially the poor, the destitute, and the forgotten.